So welcome to this episode on hypothalamus disorders. In this episode, we are going to talk about the overview of the anatomy of the hypothalamus, the functions of the hypothalamus, and some of the dysfunctions of the hypothalamus. So to start with, anatomy of the hypothalamus. It is part of the brain and presents in the posterior part of the forebrain. It connects the midbrain with the cerebral hemisphere and encloses the third ventricle. Moving on to the functions of the hypothalamus, it is concerned mainly with hemostasis of the body and regulates many functions of the body like endocrine functions, visceral, visceral functions, metabolic activities, hunger, thirst, sleep, wakefulness, emotions, sexual functions. So there are a lot of things that are controlled by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus also produces hormones that work to stimulate or inhibit several functions of the body either directly to the target tissues or through hormones through from the pituitary or to the other. So the hypothalamus produces seven hormones that go to control the pituitary and these include five releasing hormones and two inhibitory hormones. These seven hormones include a growth hormone releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, thyrotropic releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, the growth hormone re inhibitory hormone, and prolactin inhibitory hormone. That is five stimulating hormones and two inhibitory hormones. This is a pictorial representation of what we just talked about and this shows the five stimulatory hormones produced by the hypothalamus to the pituitary. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the two inhibitory hormones, but it has also included the two hormones produced directly from the hypothalamus to the target tissues, that is the kidney, that is antidiuretic hormone to the kidney and also the oxytocin to the mammary glands or to the uterus. So just as I've mentioned, the hypothalamus produces other hormones that target tissues directly and these include antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. So the seven hormones secreted by the hypothalamus are transported to the anterior pituitary by the hypothalamal hypophysio portal system. These other two hormones produced will be stored in the posterior part of the pituitary that is the antidiuretic hormone and the oxytocin now let us discuss some of the dysfunctions of hypothalamus and one of the dysfunction is diabetes insipidus and this is due to abnormal secretion of the antidiuretic hormone from the hypothalamus it is characterized by excretion of large quantities of water through the urine and diabetes insipidus occurs when the body is unable to regulate um, how it handles fluids and is not related to diabetes mellitus at all. So do not confuse this. Diabetes insipidus is therefore defined as the passage of large volumes of dilute urine that is more than 3 liters per day. The other condition is abnormal sleep pattern and there is a sudden attack of uncontrollable desire to sleep and for the person and the person suddenly falls asleep without any provocation. It normally occurs at daytime and the sleep may resemble normal sleep. Although the sleep duration is quite short, it may last from a few seconds to about 20 minutes. At night, this person may have either normal sleep or the sleep may be disturbed and in some people they may also have insomnia. So in summary, we have talked about the anatomy, the functions and the dysfunctions of the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is present in the posterior part of the forebrain and produces five stimulating and two inhibitory hormones that act on the pituitary and are stored in the anterior pituitary. It also produces oxytocin that acts on controls uterine contractions and also the mammary gland and antidiuretic hormone that concentrates the osmolarity of the urine. These two hormones are stored in the posterior pituitary. Diabetes insipidus and narcolepsy are two conditions 
that occur due to the dysfunction of the hormone secretion by the hypothalamus. And as we say, the hormone, the hypothalamus controls many other body functions, including emotions, sex, hunger, thus sleep and wakefulness. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, do subscribe for more of these videos that we release each week. So until then, stay safe.